Hello everyone, this is Southern Bell Whisper. I hope you all are doing well today. This video is going to be in two parts. It's not going to be like a part one or a part two, but it's going to be in two parts where it pertains to subject matter. The first part is going to be involving books, and the second part is going to be my Bible study for the week, because I'm probably going to have to ask forgiveness for reading some of these books, but I'm, I'm not perfect, especially this first book. So, without further ado, let me just tell you guys something. I love my Kindle. I love that my brother got me my Kindle. Like, that was the best Christmas present that I got last year. And starting off the year, I was going through books like snap, snap of a finger. And I don't know what happened, but the Kindle started giving me a headache. Looking at that screen for hours reading. And there is just something about a physical copy of a book and holding it in your hands. I don't know how to describe it to you guys, and I know that I'm not the only one that feels this way. Sometimes you gotta step back from the media and go for the physical copies. You just have to. So, the first book I'm probably going to have to ask forgiveness for multiple times, and that is From Blood and Ash. I got this book from my Secret Santa last year. I was a part of a Secret Santa. It was one of my groups on my Facebook. It was called the Reese Witherspoon Book Club page. And they had this annual Secret Santa. And so, this I had mentioned on, like, when they ask you, what kind of subjects do you like reading about? I put fantasy. Because at the end of my marriage, I was reading so much fantasy because I wanted to escape my reality and what I was living in. So I blew, I blew through the Court of Thorns and Roses series. Like, I had to read that series again when I moved here because I just ate that series up. So when the subject asked me what subjects do you like to read when the you know the oh, what you got questionnaire I put fantasy and I have not read this book why you guys why I've heard nothing but great things about this book it's called From Blood and Ash I love that it's in paperback I prefer paperback books. And it's by Jennifer L. Armitrout. I have heard nothing but great things about this book. I think the reason I didn't want to start it was because what if I love it and I'm obsessed with it and then I have to wait two weeks for Amazon to send me the next book in the series. I, I can't say that I love series but I love having the whole series so you don't have to worry about going and buying the next one and having to wait that much longer to know what this where the story is going you know so maybe that's why I haven't read it yet but it is so popular in uh, fantasy fandom I even asked uh, on one of the, I think it was last night actually, I asked one of my pages on Facebook what some good fantasy recommendations and half of them said from Blood and Ash. Let's read them back. Chosen from birth to usher in a new era, Poppy's life has never been her own. The life of the maiden is solitary, never to be touched never to be looked upon, never to be spoken to, never to experience pleasure. 
waiting for the day of her decision. She would rather be with guards, fighting by the evil that took her family, than preparing to be found worthy by the gods. But the choice has never been hers. The entire kingdom's future rests on Poppy's shoulders, something she's not even quite sure she wants for herself. Because a maiden has a heart and a soul and longing. And when a hawk, a golden-eyed guard honor, bound to ensure her incision, enters her life, destiny and duty become tangled with desire and need. He incites her anger, makes her question everything she believes in, and tempts her with the forbidden. Forsaken by the gods and feared by mortals, a fallen kingdom is rising once more, determined to take back what they believe is theirs through violence and vengeance. And as the shadow of those curse draws closer, the line between what is forbidden and what is right becomes blurred. Poppy is not only on the verge of losing her heart and being found unworthy by the gods, but also her life when every blood-soaked thread that holds her ward together begins to I believe that I'll probably have this book read if it's that good in a few days. Like I'll come home, I'll be want to, wanting to come home and read it at the end of the day after work. Like I just feel like I might as well put the rest of the books in my eBay cart right now. And I love longer books. So I don't know if you, if I ever told you guys that. But I love longer books. Yes. Okay, these are the books that I got from Goodwill. This one is called Me Talk Pretty One Day by David Sidaris. I think this is supposed to be based on a true story. It was released in 2000. If it's a true story or not, Beacon of Comic Sandy. So it's funny. I don't know about I. It, number one national bestseller is when it sees, says that at the top of a book, I know it's going to be good. So, me talk pretty one day. Sounds very interesting. I love anything, any book that makes me laugh, so I've got high hopes for this one. In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. This is for my library because I love Christina Lauren. The Unhoneymooners is my favorite summertime read. And I heard in a holidays is really good. And it's screen and it makes me think of Christmas, which is closer than we think. One Christmas wish, two brothers, and a lifetime of hope are on the line for hapless Maylin Jones in a holidays. The quintessential romantic holiday novel by Christina Lauren. It's the most wonderful time of the year, but not for Maylynn Jones. She's living with her parents, hates her going nowhere job, and has just made a romantic era of epic proportions. But perhaps worst of all, this is the last Christmas. May will be our favorite place in the world. The snowy Utah cabin where she and her family has spent the holidays every year since she was born, along with two other beloved families. Mentally melting down as she drives away from the cabin for the final time, May throws out what she thinks is a simple plea to the universe, please, show me what will make me happy. The next thing she knows, tires screech and metal collides, everything goes black, but when May gasps awake, she's on an airplane bound for Utah where she begins the same holiday all over again. 
with one hilarious disaster after another, sending her back to the plane. May must figure out how to break free of the strange time loop and finally get her true love under the mistletoe. Jam-packed with Yuletide cheer, an unforgettable unforgivable cast of characters and Christina Lawrence trademark downright hilarious hijinks. This swoon-worthy romantic read will make you believe in the power of wishes and the magic of the holidays. I love Christina Lauren. I love the uh, characters that she um, makes. I just, I love her writing. I think she's hilarious. And I can't say that about a lot of authors, that they make me laugh, so I'm actually really excited about that one, too, to read for Christmas. I also found a couple of Chelsea Handler books. You guys, I think Chelsea Handler, I don't hear much from her anymore. She just fell off the map, you guys. But her books, from what I remember, are hilarious. I think I read this one years ago. I don't remember it. Lies that Chelsea Handler told me. It says, it's no lie. Chelsea Handler loves to smoke out dumbassness. The condition people suffer from that allows them to fall prey to her brand of complete and utter nonsense. Family, friends, and co-workers have all been tricked by Chelsea into believing stories of total foolishness and into behaving like total fools. Luckily, they, they've they lived to tell the tales and for the very first time write about their humiliating experiences. If it doesn't matter if you're minding your own business, busily working, or honeymooning thousands of miles away. No one is ever safe from Chelsea's fake emails and phony pregnancies, bogus smug smuggling schemes, and made-up sports bets. Because whether it's premeditated or spur of the moment, Chelsea will do anything for laugh, and that is the truth. So when I need my laughs, I can read a book like this. And then I also, I don't think I've read this one. For one thing, I love the cover. I love. It's called Uganda Be Kidding Me. Uganda Be Kidding Me. Uganda Be Kidding Me. Anyways. On a safari in Africa. I just think she is so funny. So, really excited about that one. So that is my TBR. We are now going to start our weekly Bible study together. God forgive me for any material that may be in any of these books because I know there will be. And forgive me. She's staying. Especially with the Chelsea Handler books. I know she likes to cuss a lot. So, but, so, we're going to be trying something different again today. I, okay, that's not the right one. Hold on. I read this the other night after my mama mentioned it to me. She said, Kelly, you need to read Sermon on the Mount. So that night, I did a little extra reading and read Sermon on the Mount, and I was almost horrified because uh, I went to my mom when I was finished, and I said, Mom, if I got to be that perfect as a Christian, then I'm definitely going to hell. She was like, no, Kelly, those are just commands that, you know, make people want to be better, and I want to be better. I want to be better than the person I was yesterday or the person I was the day before. I am always striving to be a better person. So, but I found it very interesting and informative. 
so I thought you guys might like it. Okay. So it uh, starts Matthew chapter 5 and goes through chapter 7. So we're going to be here for a bit. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on the mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecute the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Do not think that I came to destroy the law are the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. For surely I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one title will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of, he of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those old, You shall not murder. And whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you, that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of, ju of the judgment, and whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council, but whoever says, You fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Agree with your adversary quickly while you are on the way with him, lest your adversary deliver you to the judge. The judge hand you over to the officer, and you be thrown into prison. As surely I say to you, you will by no means get out of there till you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. Furthermore, it has been said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that whoever divorces his wife for any reason except sexual immortality causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a woman who is divorced commits adultery. Again you have heard that was said to those old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. 
But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your yes be yes, and your no, no, for whatever is more than these is from the evil one. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you not to resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. You have heard that was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good the, to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good, and scenes rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Take heed that you do not do your charitable de deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will himself reward you openly. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. But surely I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret reward, will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heaven do, heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. In this manner, therefore, pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your, te your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forget our debtors, and do not lead us into temptation. And do not lead us into temptation. Sorry, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. For surely I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting but to your Father, who is in the secret place, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you openly. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, 
How great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither stow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yes, say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the, the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will, wor will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Judge not that you be not judged, for with what judgment you judge you will be judged, and with the measures you use it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, Let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye? Hypocrite! First remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearl, pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn and tear you in pieces. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes, or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into, into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye who practice lawlessness. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine does not do them, will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. And so it was, when Jesus had ended these sayings, that the people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. 
So you guys can't imagine when I read that for the first time, I was like, oh, I'm guilty of like 80% of these commandments. Like I was horrified when I first read this, but I think, you know, that's why Jesus died for us. We're going to be sinners no matter how loyal we are to our faith, how faithful we are. We're still sinners. We still sin, sin somehow, even when you don't even realize you're doing it. We still sin. And that's why Jesus died for us on the cross at Calvary. So... I love, I love my sermon that uh, my pastor did this morning. He named it, uh, he's talking about uh, the woman in the Bible that had the hunchback and the Lord touched her and she was healed and being bent down by everything in life fear, worry. You can be the most faithful person. You can say all your prayers. You can listen to all the Christian music. You can watch all the rated G movies you want. But if you're worried about bills or you're worried about tomorrow or the next day, that bends you down more more than just physical because I told you guys I have scoliosis myself uh, so I've been forward a little bit and it, it, he, he was right it's painful but if you live a life of just saying God I'm a sinner I know I'm going to have hard times but if I go down then I'm taking you with me so I try not to worry much anymore I try not to be fearful of what tomorrow is going to bring I try I'm not saying I'm a hundred percent yet but I do try not to worry and have those worldly feelings just anxiety and loss and grieving everything so but he preached on that today he said you can be the most perfect Christian but if you're worried or have any of those other worldly fear fear, worry, anxiety then you're still being bowed over by all this worldly worries you know you can say oh God's been good to me but if you don't put a smile on your face and be joyful and show that God has changed your life then really it's just words you know because I can tell you guys 100% how much God has changed my life I mean he literally picked me up from a pit of darkness and despair and I still don't know what made me so special that he saved my life but I will be I will forever be indebted to him I will spend I, I've spent every day studying my Bible writing in my journal and I cannot tell you guys if anything write in your journal I cannot tell you guys how much journaling changes things, at least to me. I journal every day, every single day. But yeah, and it was also our pastor's birthday tomorrow. And I decided this morning I was going to sit in the back because, you know, I'm tall and I don't like blocking people's views. But something told me, go sit behind that sweet cup, you know, mother with her son. And I was in the middle. I never sat there before. And it was a, 
a young woman and her husband and their son. And when uh, the pastor mentioned his birthday tomorrow, he said, it's not just because of my birthday. He said, that man right there, and he pointed to the man that was sitting in front of me and said that he had been sober for 22 years, that he also shared the birthday of uh, the sobriety of this man in our congregation. And I was like, wow. Like, out of all the places I could have sat, and I sat behind him. And 22 is my favorite number. When I left, I congratulated him. I said, I know how it is. And my hat goes off to you, seriously. Okay, so for our Jesus Calling book, it says, Hold my hand and walk joyously with me through this day. Together we will savor the pleasures and endure the difficulties it brings. Be on the lookout for everything I have prepared for you. Stunning scenery, racing winds of adventure, cozy nooks for resting when you are weary, and much more. I am your guide as well as your constant companion. I know every step of the journey ahead of you all the way to heaven. You don't have to choose between staying close to me and staying on course. Since I am the way, staying close to me is staying on course. As you focus your thoughts on me, I will guide you carefully along today's journey. Don't worry about what is around the next bend. Just concentrate on enjoying my presence and staying in step with me. And of course, one that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's my mama's favorite. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Isaiah 58, 11. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Colossians, Colossians 4, 2. I love this book, you guys. But, anyways, this is the end of my video. I hope, I really hope you guys enjoy this. I know... Not many people like longer videos, but I really do enjoy doing these Bible studies with you guys every Sunday. It, it really blesses me for the week ahead, so I really, I really enjoy it. But, okay, so we are going to end this video with my prayer that I do after every Bible study video, so. We're going to bow our heads, close our eyes. Dear God, thank you so much for blessing the hands of our pastor and the voice. Thank you for blessing his hands and his voice to bestow upon us and the whole congregation with such a great and impactful sermon this morning. The pastor even mentioned how he asked you during, before every sermon to bless him with a sermon that will bring you glory. And I think that is what makes him such a wonderful pastor. And I am so blessed that I have found this church that's perfect, that every time I go to church, I'm actually looking forward to going and sharing it with the congregation. So thank you for that, and thank you for leading me towards that, that church and all those people who go there. God, I pray for all who are sick, all who are weary, are all who are going through the these worldly feelings of fear and worry and anxiety and confusion and I just pray that you bestow upon them this knowing feeling even the ones that don't believe in you and your love for us I pray that you bestow upon them this feeling of knowing in their heart 
that no matter what, everything is going to be okay. We are all protected by the love that you have for us. I should have been dead a long time ago. I was sick. I was in an abusive situation, marriage. I made mistakes that put me at death's door multiple times. M mentally, I could have, I just, I don't know what made me so special that you saved me, but I will forever be grateful for it. And that's why I strive every single day to be a better person for you, for me, for the people that love me, and for the people that I come in contact with that maybe they're on their last shred of hope and strength. I hope I can be that person that gives them just that little bit of strength, that little bit of voice in their head that says everything will be okay. And I pray for the rest of the world, anything going on in the world right now, I, I pray over everyone, even my enemies. I love you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys. This is the end of my video. I will be talking to you guys soon.